There are two ways to make money in crypto, hodling and trading. Hodling is easy. It involves accumulating coins and tokens regardless of the current price. The problem with hodling is that it isn't always as profitable as trading. But of course, the problem with trading is that it's very difficult, especially when it comes to crypto. However, it can be a lot easier if you have the right strategy. My name is Guy, and today we're going to explain a simple step-by-step -step trading strategy you can use to know when to buy, when to sell, and which cryptos to trade. I'll start by saying that nothing in this video is financial advice. It's purely educational content that's meant to help you on your crypto journey. I'll also note that this trading strategy assumes that you know a thing or two about things like price manipulation, cycle analysis, technical analysis, and tokenomics. If you don't, then don't worry. We'll leave some videos in the description that explain them all in detail. That said, the first step in this trading strategy is to identify where we are in the crypto market cycle. As most of you will know, the crypto market follows a four-year cycle due to the Bitcoin halving. Depending on the cycle, these four years consist of one to two years of bull market and two to three years of bear market. If you look at the chart of almost any crypto during a bear market, you'll notice that it consists of prices gradually going down with massive pumps in between. These pumps are caused by traders who bet that crypto prices would go down. When crypto prices go up just a bit, they must buy, causing a huge pump. Now, if you look at the chart of almost every crypto during a bull market, you'll notice the opposite. Prices tend to go gradually up with massive crashes in between. As you might have guessed, that's because there are traders betting that prices will go up. When they go down just a bit, they must sell, causing a huge crash. In other words, the bias of leverage traders during bull and bear markets tends to cause prices to move sharply in the other direction, down during bull markets and up during bear markets. This can be extremely stressful if you're a regular trader, and it's a big part of why crypto trading is so difficult. Another reason why crypto trading is so difficult is because of whales, large investors who have the power to push crypto prices up or down. For the purposes of this video, you can think of crypto whales as falling into two camps, TradFi whales and actual crypto whales. Now, TradFi whales include institutional investors and wealthy individual investors who don't normally invest in crypto. By contrast, crypto whales include institutions and wealthy individuals within the crypto industry that continue to invest regardless of market conditions. During bull markets, there tend to be more TradFi whales in the crypto market. The consequence of this is that crypto becomes more correlated to similar kinds of assets that these TradFi whales hold, namely tech stocks. TradFi whales typically see cryptocurrencies as more volatile versions of these analogous assets. Naturally, TradFi whales often try and manipulate the market to make money from retail investors like you and me. If you watched our video about the Wyckoff method, you'll know that this involves painting technical analysis patterns that retail investors recognize and then violating these patterns on purpose. During bear markets, however, there tend to be more crypto whales in the crypto market, mainly because the TradFi whales have left. The consequence of this is that crypto is less correlated to tech stocks. The fact that crypto has decoupled from tech stocks in recent weeks suggests crypto whales are currently in control. Like the TradFi whales, the crypto whales often try and manipulate the crypto market at the expense of retail investors. The difference is that crypto whales purposely try to push crypto prices above or below key price levels that they know retail investors are watching. This often results in large liquidations. The fact that we've seen lots of crypto market manipulation like this in recent weeks is additional evidence to suggest that we're still in a crypto bear market. However, it's quite clear that the crypto market is in that transition phase between bear and bull, with the bull market coming up on the horizon. And that's why it's a good idea to make sure that you've made accounts on the exchanges that support your favorite cryptos. 
The Coin Bureau Deals page has up to $40,000 in bonuses and 60% in trading fee discounts available on these exchanges. And this is exclusively for the viewers of this channel and is for a limited time only. So if you want to take advantage of all of that, head on over to the description right now, hit the Coin Bureau Deals link and find an exchange or deal that's suited to you. Now this ties into the second step in the trading strategy, and that's to watch what BTC is doing. That's because money in the crypto market tends to flow mainly into BTC, then into large altcoins like ETH, and finally into smaller altcoins. In case you haven't noticed, the money is currently flowing mainly into BTC. This can be clearly seen on the Bitcoin dominance chart, which shows that BTC continues to account for a larger and larger percentage of crypto's total market cap. This is likely to continue until the Bitcoin halving, which is expected to occur sometime next spring, specifically late March or early April. In practical terms, this means that the money will continue to flow mainly into BTC in the coming months. At first glance, you'd think this means that now is the time to start buying. Upon closer inspection, however, there could be better entry points in the coming weeks and months. This is where the technical analysis comes in. Now, as a rule of thumb, you want to avoid analyzing crypto prices on shorter timeframes. This is in part because short-term price action can be very noisy, and in part because those crypto whales are actively hunting those who trade on shorter timeframes. That's why it's better to stick to medium-term timeframes like the weekly and long-term timeframes like the monthly. Once you've adjusted accordingly, it's time to slap on some indicators. If you've been keeping up with the Coin Bureau, you'll know that we've been using the Bollinger Band indicator a lot. This is in part because the Bollinger Band indicator has a solid track record of revealing when BTC is overbought and oversold. It's also in part because the Bollinger Bands tend to track other key price levels and moving average for BTC with more flexibility. This helps a lot when crypto whales are around. As you can see, BTC is currently pushing above the weekly Bollinger Band. This means that BTC is likely overbought and could experience a large pullback. Recent breaches of the Bollinger Band to the upside resulted in multiple weeks of losses, so it's possible that we could see the same happen again. However, there is one caveat, and that's that there have been cases where BTC was pushing above the weekly Bollinger Band for weeks on end. This seems to have happened during the bear market rally in 2019 and again during the beginning of the last crypto bull market in 2020. So this begs the question of which scenario BTC is currently in. Given past cycles and the fact that BTC pushed above the weekly Bollinger Band many times since the start of the year, it's more likely that BTC is in the 2019 bear market rally phase. After all, the bull market begins after the halving, not before. Additional evidence for this can be seen with the Bollinger Bands on the monthly. As you can see, the Bollinger Band moving average has been scarily accurate in revealing when BTC is in bear phase and when it's in bull phase. Being above the moving average means bull. Being below it means bear. BTC closing October above the Bollinger Band moving average means it's in a bull phase. However, that's not the same thing as a bull market. After all, BTC also entered a bull phase during the 2019 rally. In the months that followed, BTC continued to trend lower per the bear market dynamics I mentioned earlier. If history repeats, then BTC will likely continue to trade lower around the Bollinger Band moving average until the next crypto bull market begins. Any monthly closes below this moving average will therefore be buying opportunities. Notably, this could mean that the crash to 15k last autumn was the bottom for BTC. Even so, this doesn't mean that BTC couldn't go lower from here. Barring another black swan event like a pandemic flash crash, BTC could still fall as low as 20k before finally entering the bull market. Given the rising Bitcoin dominance, this would correspond to new lows in most altcoins, possibly including ETH. This relates to the third step in the trading strategy, and that's to watch what ETH is doing against BTC and in fiat terms. If you've been keeping up with the channel, you'll know that we've highlighted ETH's weakness against BTC as evidence that the actual crypto bull market hasn't begun just yet. 
Whether you look at ETH against BTC on the weekly or the monthly, it's clear to see that ETH is about to collapse against its big brother. This is in part because of the massive M pattern, in part because ETH is on the brink of falling below a key level of 0.05 ETH per BTC, and because it's squeezing to the downside. To be clear, the M pattern isn't a technical analysis pattern per se. The closest equivalent would be a double top, which, as you can see, isn't that easy to spot. Regardless, this M pattern is something we've noticed in many crypto charts, and it almost always has a bearish outcome. In the case of ETH, the M pattern is around 0.02 ETH tall. When you subtract this from the 0.05 ETH key level, you end up with a price of 0.03 ETH per BTC, the lowest level since the last bear market. History suggests that ETH could spend many months around these levels before rallying against BTC again. This is consistent with the fact that ETH is squeezing to the downside against BTC on the monthly. To refresh your memory, a Bollinger Band squeeze happens when prices have been too stable for too long. This typically foreshadows a strong move to the upside or the downside. In this case, it's the downside. Why does this matter? Well, you can consider ETH to be a proxy for most altcoins. When ETH is declining against BTC, that tells you that money is flowing out of ETH and into BTC. This happens either because the crypto market is crashing and there's a flight to safety, or because investors are FOMOing into BTC. And in case you missed the news, investors have been FOMOing into BTC because of the spot Bitcoin ETF applications. It's possible that these applications will be delayed until the last decision dates. This would happen in March, just before the Bitcoin halving. Funny how that happens. Anyways, so long as investors continue to be focused on BTC, this means that ETH will continue to lag it in fiat terms. And so will most other altcoins. Obviously, if the crypto market is hit by another black swan, then this would cause flows into BTC while all crypto prices crash, with alts being hit the hardest. For now, it looks like investors will continue FOMOing into BTC, meaning that ETH will lag but still pump. However, the fact that key figures in Ethereum's ecosystem, including its co-founders and the Ethereum Foundation, have been selling large amounts of ETH suggest that there's a real risk of the latter. Put differently, if the crypto bull market was coming, then Ethereum insiders probably wouldn't be selling. They would continue to sit on their ETH as it gains in fiat, even if it is losing value against BTC. Take a second to consider that all the regulatory risks around crypto are still lurking in the background. Additional evidence of this latter risk can be seen in ETH's price in fiat terms. As some of you will know, we believe that ETH has been leading the crypto market recently. This is certainly up for debate, but our reasoning here is simple. TradFi whales love ETH. ETH's underperformance means no TradFi whales. And as you learned earlier, no TradFi whales means we're in a crypto bear market. The fact that TradFi investors reportedly continue to rotate out of ETH suggests that the crypto bull market isn't as close as we might think. If it was, then they'd be accumulating ETH. But on-chain analysis suggests continued selling. And the proof of the pudding is in the eating. ETH's price looks almost completely different from BTC's on the weekly and the monthly. For instance, on the weekly, ETH isn't even above the Bollinger Bands and is even struggling to get above the moving average. Recall that BTC recently pierced above the Bollinger Bands. What this all means is that it's probably too soon to accumulate ETH, and that means that it's way too soon to accumulate altcoins. This pertains to the fourth step in the trading strategy, and that's to watch promising altcoins. By now, you'll know that most other altcoins won't be tradable anytime soon. With the high levels of leverage and very little liquidity, trading altcoins at this stage is like gambling with high risk and fairly low rewards. But it's only a matter of time before the crypto bull market begins. You'll know it's beginning when ETH starts gaining in BTC terms. That will tell you that money is starting to rotate from BTC into ETH, and that means it's only a matter of time before the money rotates from ETH into other alts. This is where a new cohort comes in, the retail investor. 
Whereas TradFi whales and crypto whales tend to stick to BTC and larger altcoins, retail investors tend to stick to altcoins. That's because altcoins are where the biggest gains can be made in percentage terms, but only if you know what you're doing. As we mentioned in our video about when to accumulate altcoins, retail investors typically invest in cryptos with low price tags regardless of their market caps. Now, I'm going to go ahead and assume that most of you know that market cap is what determines how much a crypto can pump by in percentage terms. With that knowledge in hand, identifying tradable altcoins is pretty straightforward. Start by looking at the largest pairs on the largest crypto exchanges and sorting these trading pairs by crypto prices from lowest to highest. This can be easily done on coin tracking websites like CoinMarketCap and CoinGecko. Once you've done that, identify which of the cryptos with the lowest price tags have the smallest market caps. Then assess the crypto's tokenomics. Ideally, the coin or token has a supply that's mostly in circulation and fairly evenly distributed. Note that we have a video about how to analyze tokenomics. Now, once that's done, do some basic research about the crypto project. Is the selling point simple to understand? Is the community large relative to the crypto's market cap? Is the project part of the ecosystem of a larger and better known crypto project? If the answers are all yes, consider that a good bet. At that point, the technical analysis comes back into play. Unlike BTC and larger altcoins, it's harder to get leverage on smaller altcoins and the traders are less experienced. The result is that technical analysis tends to work a lot better because there's less market manipulation and a lot more irrational emotion. As such, buying and selling around psychologically significant price levels like one cent or one dollar using traditional technical analysis can be extremely lucrative. The trick is not to get sucked into the hype or the greed and remember that it's the market cap that sets the limit on how large a crypto can grow. You can protect yourself against this by putting things into perspective. If you bought some altcoin at a $10 million market cap and it's pumped to 100 million, consider taking some profits off the table. Sure, it could pump by another 10x from there, but it's going to be a lot harder to do than the first 10x. If you're not sure when to take profit, check that altcoin's price in BTC terms. If your technical analysis tells you that the altcoin still has room to run against BTC, then you can keep your position in play, assuming we're still clearly in a bull market. If the bear market is approaching, then take those profits. Now, the only caveat is to be on the lookout for catalysts. For small altcoins, the most significant catalyst will be listing on a larger crypto exchange, particularly US crypto exchanges. Statistically speaking, altcoins will continue to pump for days or even weeks after they list on larger exchanges. This underscores the importance of having accounts on multiple exchanges, and I'll remind you all that the Coin Bureau Deals page has the biggest discounts on trading fees and up to $40,000 of bonuses on the best crypto exchanges. And the link to that hasn't gone anywhere. It's still down in the description. This brings me to the fifth step of the trading strategy, and that's to put it all together. Let's take it from the top, starting with BTC. Given that the Bitcoin halving is fast approaching, this means that there's only a few months left to accumulate BTC before the next crypto bull market begins. As we've learned, the best time to do this is when BTC is below the Bollinger Band moving average on the monthly. If you want to play it safe, accumulate when BTC is below the Bollinger Band moving average on the monthly, but above the Bollinger Band moving average on the weekly. Once the Bitcoin halving has come around, chances are that most altcoins will be at or near their bottoms against BTC, and it's possible that they'll be at the bottom in fiat terms too. If this is the case, then there's two ways you can trade in preparation for the parabolic run. For starters, you can sell your BTC for these altcoins. This is ideal if you've made profits on your BTC position, though many, including us, would argue that the end game is to accumulate BTC, not fiat. Assuming that is your end game, then it's best to accumulate these altcoins using fiat and not selling BTC. Just make sure that you're accumulating on a secure hardware wallet. 
Note, the Coin Bureau Deals page has the biggest discounts on the best hardware wallets too. Now, as we've learned, the first rotation will be out of BTC into ETH. The awesome thing about holding ETH is that you can stake it and use it as collateral in DeFi protocols. And if you want to take things to the next level, you can use your liquid staked ETH as collateral in DeFi to borrow stablecoins to buy other alts. And that reminds me, if any of the altcoins you're accumulating are proof of stake, then stake them. This will allow you to earn passive income while you explore other altcoin opportunities. Just remember, though, to take note of the slashing conditions and the unlock times so that you don't get wrecked and you cash out on time. Assessing the value of these altcoins in ETH terms should give you a good sense of roughly when you should sell them. That's because many proof-of-stake cryptos seek to compete against Ethereum. If the weekly or monthly chart suggests they're about to see a blow-off top against ETH, prepare to unstake and sell. Note that we have a video about how to spot the top in the description. Now, for all the other altcoins, watch their price in fiat terms, their price in BTC terms, the size of their market caps, and what bigger exchanges they could realistically be listed on, if any. Also, consider doing some basic sentiment analysis, such as checking Google search trends for these coins and tokens. Combining these factors should give you a good sense of when to sell these altcoins. The caveat is, though, that if the small altcoins you're holding become large, then you need to start paying closer attention to what BTC is doing again. That's because these altcoins will be closer to BTC in terms of crypto flows. If you believe that BTC has put in its new all-time high for the bull market or is close to it, then it's probably time to take profits, regardless of how much you've gained or lost. That's because the correlation between large caps and BTC is stronger than between medium and small caps. Conversely, if the altcoins you accumulated have medium or small market caps, it's possible that they could continue to pump for weeks or even months after the BTC top is in. That's because the most speculative players in the crypto market will keep going down the risk curve to make mad gains. Just remember that some altcoins will see their all-time highs a lot sooner than the rest of the crypto market. Our research suggests that these will be the altcoins from the first rotation out of large caps like ETH and into smaller alts. Chances are it'll be some specific crypto niche, and we've got a video about those too. Now, if your endgame is to accumulate BTC, then you can ignore this caveat and sell your altcoins when they hit their highest points against BTC, regardless of size. Just be aware that BTC has historically lost up to 80% of its value in bear markets. Depending on how much you've made, you may still be in profit despite this. The caveat here in this case is that central banks could begin accumulating BTC in January 2025 when it becomes legal for them to do so. This could set a floor under BTC's price the same way it has for gold in recent months. That means BTC may not fall as much as it did in previous bear markets. But that, my friends, is a topic for another time. And that's all for today's video, folks. So if you found it helpful, help us out by smashing that like button. If you want to keep getting this helpful content, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell. If you want to help others, consider sharing this video with them. And if you want help with your crypto trading, remember that the Coin Bureau Deals page has all the resources you need. Trading fee discounts, bonuses of up to 40k, discounts on the best hardware wallets, and even deals on the best crypto trading bots. Mm. The link to that will be down in the description. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.